सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू वन ऑफ द मोस्ट क्रिटिकल एंड इम्पॉर्टेंट वीडियो ऑफ द एंटायर क्लिनिकल रिसर्च डोमेन सो दी अदर डे आई वॉज डिस्कसिंग ड्यूरिंग द ऑडिट विथ माई कलीग दैट विच डॉक्यूमेंट इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड क्रिटिकल डॉक्यूमेंट इन क्लिनिकल ट्रायल एंड यूनानिमसली इट वॉज अग्री दैट द इन्फॉर्म कंसेंट डॉक्यूमेंट एंड द इन्फॉर्म कंसेंट वॉज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट क्रिटिकल पार्ट ऑफ द क्लिनिकल ट्रायल so in this particular session we will discuss exactly what informed consent is and what are the aspects of informed consent form and why it plays such a significant role in clinical research without further ado let's start this session so in this particular session we will discuss that what exactly is informed consent then we'll look into what are the components of the informed consent form then we'll look into how exactly the consenting procedure is done in clinical research and finally we'll understand the significance of informed consent and why it plays a major role in clinical research so let us understand exactly what is informed consent so according to icsa gcp informed consent is defined as a process by which a subject voluntarily confirms his or her willingness to participate in a clinical trial and this is done after having been informed of all the aspects of the clinical trial that are relevant to the subject decision to participate so whenever a subject wants to participate in a clinical trial he is informed about all the aspects of the clinical trial and through his voluntary confirmation he signs the consent and the entire process is called as informed consent process okay now let us understand what are the critical parameters of informed consent first and foremost is informed consent is taken prior to the research study is initiated or any activity is being done so no activity can be performed before taking consent consent should be the first thing that should be obtained and then and only then the trial related activity can be performed the second criteria is whenever you explain the informed consent you'll have to explain the risk in the trial the benefit that the subject or study participant would get and what are the alternative therapies that are available in the market today next is whenever this consent is documented it should always be a written consent it should be signed and dated by the subject and properly documented okay this helps us to retrace the consent given by the subject in case of any audit or in case of any essay okay so written signed and dated consent is a very critical part and voluntary decision of the participant it means that after being informed all the aspects of the clinical trial it should be the subject's own decision he should not be influenced or coerced in the study but his voluntary decision for participation in the study is very critical finally the subject should also be informed that at any point of time in clinical trial you can withdraw from this study and once you withdraw there is no penalty or even you do not have to provide any reason so these are the five critical parameters of an informed consent another critical aspect is your credentials in clinical research so if you want to make a serious career in clinical research and want to climb up the success ladder it is very important that you have a certification in clinical research so our friends at clinical aim research institute provide an amazing advanced certification in clinical research where they also teach you about clinical data management and pharmacovigilance so go ahead and call on these numbers and get yourself certified it is one of the amazing opportunity and they also uh, provide various uh, discounts and provide these courses at a very affordable rate as compared to the industry standards so go ahead and check them out now let us understand what exactly is the informed consent form and what are the components or the ingredients involved in an in informed consent form so whenever you see a informed consent form there are 20 parameters which will have to be included in the informed consent form and these parameters are as we'll discuss so first and foremost uh, there will be 
a statement which will clearly describe that this particular clinical trial it involves research okay so that is the first criteria second thing is the informed consent form will also mention that what is the purpose of the trial why are we conducting this trial and what is the therapeutic uh, indication next thing is the trial or the consent form will also mention that we have a possible treatment okay it is not a sure shot treatment but a possibility next thing is what are the procedure involved if there are any invasive procedures then what do they involve that will be clearly mentioned then there will be also a section on subject responsibility that when the subject has to come to the site what are the experimental aspect of the trial what are the risk and inconveniences that can be expected during the trial again what are the benefits of uh, participating in this clinical trial and what are the alternative therapies that are involved in the clinical trial okay this will be uh, mentioned in the consent again the consent shall also uh, include a part called as compensation in related to trial injury so if the subject suffers any injury even how he will be compensated that is also explained okay next part uh, would be what is the prorated uh, payment that the subject shall receive what kind of expenses the subject shall receive during the trial and uh, the voluntary nature of the clinical trial and the subject is able to withdraw at any point of time then what kind of record shall be saved uh, from the subject's point of view and how the data access would be then there is a clear statement which is in compliance to the hipaa law which is regarding the confidentiality of the subject so that the subject's data is confidential and no one will ever disclose that subject participated in this particular trial and his identity is safe again there will also uh, be a section which will clearly inform that whenever there is uh, critical information involved in the clinical trial the new information would be timely communicated there will be a section uh, which will explain who the contact person would be at site and in case of any emergency situation where do you contact then there would be uh, also uh, the reasons for termination in case the subject is terminated and uh, there will be a schedule which will explain the study duration that how long the subject would be in the clinical trial and what would be the number of subject that would be involved in the clinical trial so if you see the overall components of the consent form you would understand that a lot of information is being given to the subjects which covers all the aspects including the subjects responsibility the trials responsibility what is going on in the trial what are all the aspects of the trial what is the focus of the trial so whenever someone ask you to mention what a consent form consist of then these should be the aspect that you should be able to convey now let us understand how exactly the consenting procedure occurs in clinical trials so whenever a trial is available the principal investigator would inform the subject that we have a particular clinical trial and your medical condition which includes the trial inclusion criteria is in alignment to the trial so would you be interested in listening to what this trial is and they will have an appointment booked then after this step the subject is informed about the study and the principal investigator request to participate in the consenting procedure in the consenting procedure so in india it is required to be audio visual consent where in front of camera the pi takes the consent and explains everything about the study so before coming on to the camera even the audio visual consent is important and then and if the subject signs the audio visual consent then and only then the av session starts so once the av session starts the principal investigator discusses the study okay now during this av session the study is explained in detail and emphasis is put on all aspects of the clinical trial and the subject is also allowed to ask question so if the subject has any particular question regarding study visit or his responsibility or this particular medication then this is the time and subject can go ahead and ask his question the principal investigator after that reviews the medical history and determines if the subject is fit to participate in the study and then he request him to sign the consent form so this is how the subject signs the informed consent 
and once we have the written consent the main consent okay after ab consent then and only then the screening activities begin and the study procedure are started so once the consenting is done then and only you can perform any kind of study activities now let us look into the significance of informed consent that why informed consent is important and what role does it play in the entire aspects of the clinical trial so first and foremost significance of consent is that through the informed consent we respect the subject's ability to take decision okay so by taking his written consent we ensure that the subject is capable of performing his own life decision and he is not coerced or forced in this particular clinical trial next is that through the consent process we adhere to the ethical standard okay that are involved in the clinical trial and this comes okay the source of this particular ethical standard is from the nuremberg code in the nuremberg code i have made a separate video you can go ahead and check it out in nuremberg code what happened is the nazi performed an human uh, in human experimentation and there no consent was taken so after that the world learned and they have implemented the ethical standard where the consent plays a very important role in clinical trial next is through the informed consent we also ensure that the institutional ethics committee or institutional review board guidelines for ethical conduct of the clinical trial are maintained and we ensure that the subjects rights safety and well being are protected by following the informed consent process also we ensure that written confirmation is provided from the subject through signing the informed consent and all the information has been disclosed to the subject the patient competency has been evaluated by the uh, site staff and the investigator and we ensure that this consent is of a voluntary nature and no force or coercion was applied finally we must understand that this particular consenting process or the informed consent form is essentially a collaborative process which allows the patient and the healthcare providers to make decision together it is not that one single party is making decision through consent we allow all the stakeholders to come together the subjects and the investigator and they both can take a collaborative decision on the health aspect the safety aspect of the clinical trial so this is the significance of informed consent and finally in clinical trial we have a principle of safety first so by signing consent we ensure that this safety first is the focus of the clinical trial and through the patient and medical ethics are taken care of so we ensure safety we ensure patient priority and also the, to the ethical aspects of clinical trial so these entire aspects are the significance of informed consent and this is how the consenting is performed in clinical trial so i hope you learned a lot about clinical trial and thank you for watching this video i would request all of you to like share and subscribe this channel and share this video to as much as people as possible so that they can understand what consenting is and how it is performed and uh, this consent process also plays a very important role in interviews and uh, your understanding in clinical trial so go ahead share it with your colleagues and friends and please subscribe uh, to this channel